And we have with us a very special guest now to start our show, Leila Tayabji. She is the chairperson and founder member of Dastkar. You have heard of the Dastkar Heart. In fact, Leila Tayabji has been working for more than 25 years. The people who are working for the Hunar Mand, who are working for the Dastkar, they come to this heart and give their own support. Leila Ji, thank you so much for taking out time. And uh, we have seen due to this pandemic, uh, uh, the life and the stress these weavers and artisans are going through. How did you get so many changes in this year? What is the situation in the earth? Well, you know that uh, I was talking to a group of craftspeople today, veteran craftspeople who have been through the decades watching what is happening to craft in India. And they were saying that this pandemic and the lockdown, which was a result of the pandemic, was worse than demonetization. It was worse than the Bhuj earthquake. It was worse than any natural disasters that they have seen. And I think uh, when I asked them that what made this different, they said that before we knew that adversity had struck us or disaster had struck us, but when we came out of it, the market would be there and the market was there waiting for us. I think today the problem is that craftspeople really wonder what the market is going to be like even when the lockdown and the pandemic goes away because the economy has been so badly struck and people's purchasing power is so much less. And of course, the tragedy is that craft is not a priority. It is not the thing that people rush out to buy. And I think that that is what we have to change if we want something to change for craftspeople today. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Um, hello and welcome. Thank you, uh, Laila, for joining us. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for being here with us. Frankly, you more than Lovely anyone in India and I'm so has spent happy so many, that many, many years taken this initiative because it's much, much needed. No, no. It is much needed. And as you said, it needs to be a much higher priority. But you know, you more than anyone in India spend many, many years building, reviving, saving and promoting Indian artisanship that goes back, oh gosh, several, the artisanship goes back several generations. I wasn't saying that you and me go back several generations, I meant the artisans. <laughs> well, in fact, in many ways, actually, has. No, I would yes, say in I many ways, your name is synonymous. Sorry? No, no, you, you say. Okay, okay. I was just saying that your name is, in fact, uh, is virtually synonymous with the movement to save our handloom heritage. And you've traveled across India, the length and breadth of India. I just wanted to ask you practically, what steps should be taken to kind of ensure the survival and give a better livelihood of our, to our artisans, our weavers and craftspeople who deserve it. We're not doing them a favor. We are just so far treating them appallingly. And, and, and they're globally recognized as to be outstanding. So how do we give them what they deserve? Well, I think that really uh, craftspeople's strength is also their weakness because they are, after all, they are part of our culture, they are part of our aesthetic, but also, most importantly, they are part of our economy. But I think that this always sort of slips past because craftspeople have always been there over the centuries, and we tend to take them a little for granted. And where today, uh, whether they are economists or bureaucrats or politicians, or whoever are debating the directions that India is going to take, somehow craftspeople get left out of that. And we feel, oh, they'll always be there, or this is a very primitive kind of activity. It's sort of when we are, India is marching into the 21st century and trying to catch up with the whole technological world, that craftspeople, do they have a part to play? Should they just be subsidized? Uh, for the duration, how do we do it? And to me, this is the most short-sighted thing because actually the craft sector and the handloom sector are the two areas where India 
has something that no other country in the world has. And while exactly. we're uh, sort exactly. of rushing to catch up with the rest of the world in so many directions, we have this wonderful asset and we should be investing in it instead of just assuming that it will always be there. And uh, one of the phrases which really gets my goat is when you talk about investment in the sector and or some uh, calamity that has struck the craft sector, uh, you're always told that, oh, craft people are so resilient. You know, the sector is very resilient. Right. I think that we have to stop saying that. And we have to think that if this is has survived and has to survive, Right. And has to continue. But Mr. Abji, let me ask you, Vishnu amazing. here, and let, let me ask you, Mr. Abji, one, one question that comes to mind. If you had to tell our viewers one thing about why they should buy handmade, what would that be? Well, it would be because, uh, as I said, it reflects an Indian culture and aesthetic. It also means that in a world where everything is getting so uniform and branded, Handcraft is the one way to have something which is distinct and unique to yourself. I think that the time for sort of brands uh, which look exactly the same, whichever high street you're in, wherever you are in the world, has really gone. And we should play to our strengths. We should see how wonderful it is to look distinctive, how appropriate it is in this world to have something which is green, which is eco-friendly, which is made with love and with um, tradition, and which yet can be transformed into something very contemporary and appropriate. Yeah, I think that's exactly the point. Um, Vishnu, your question is really valid. Uh, it's really it's not why we should buy it. It is just a wonderful, uh, wonderful products. They should scream out at us, but you know the marketing by these, by mass marketing by corporates and advertisers don't really uh, let us see enough of this wonderful and as Leila says, unique aspect of high quality in India. So it should come naturally to us. It is it just need they need a, a bit of a step up and help like we help every sector and perhaps help them a little more. Yes, then we I do think other sectors, but it's exactly the opposite. Things like packaging, yeah. promotion, uh, sort of presentation, yeah. of course, R&D and yeah. design development because consumers' lifestyles have changed and we need to create things which are functional and appropriate to those lifestyles. But right. we need to actually treat it like any other sector of the economy. We have to... Uh, invest yep. in infrastructure, we have to invest in skilling, we have to invest, as I said, in packaging and promotion. Right. And I think we just don't yes. do that. I mean, there's absolutely no reason But Delaji, why... let me tell you what, what I can share with you right now, what we can share with you right now. And, and this is going to make you happy because it certainly makes us happy. Before we go to our next panelist, we are very happy to announce that Optum India has pledged 28 lakh rupees in support of Handmade in India. In the true spirit of Diwali, Optum India members will receive handmade gifts. Now, conventionally, Optum would celebrate with sweets, but this time they are celebrating the festival with India's artisans. Pranoy, isn't that absolutely wonderful? Fantastic. I, I mean, we should all please come forward and use this opportunity to use uh, the handloom sector and give gifts of handlooms of various types or artisan uh, works of different kinds for Diwali. And for any gift, it really is a great idea. 